In our first story, the Finance Minister Ken Oforiata will today deliver the 2021 first quarter budget statement to Parliament. Ahead of that, Minority Leader Haruna Idrisu is urging him to ensure he doesn't cover up the extent of the damage this NPP administration has caused to the economy. We will bring you that story a bit later, but in the meantime, a number of Ghanaians have been complaining bitterly about the poor state of road infrastructure leading to and from their various communities. For instance, on Joy Ballads Box, held in four different communities so far, Port Road Network topped the list of issues the electorate indicators will influence their vote come December 7. Participants at the Hohoe Ballots Box program spent a greater part of the two-hour show holding their parliamentary candidates to account for the, show, the slow pace of work on the Port Eastern Corridor Road. Some issues came up at the Iso Jamang Adum Ballot Box production, where traditional authorities dwelled heavily on the terrible nature of roads in the municipality. The situation was not different at the Ablikuma South constitu constituency. Now, at the last event held at Boko, it saw the a fierce expression of anguish from electorate at the constituents from Boko, Garu and Zebila interrogated their parliamentary candidates on the unmortuable state of roads linking the three communities as well as the inner city roads. All the time on journeys. And I think my problem is uh, these our politicians, they take us we Ghanaians granted. When they see our, they was, when they see that when it is time for uh, election before we see them on the road with uh, their machines, which is very bad. They, are, they think that without them, that we, without we, we, there's no anything. But I want to assure them that the moment you want to show yourself to us, we Ghanaians, we'll show to you. Because I remember that the time our former president, he brought the machines on the road. The road was done continuously. The moment this our former uh, uh, this uh, 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 president Nana Akufado he came to power, when I used to all the road in Ghana, he sacked all the uh, people on the road. And I am a Ghanaian. I need to express myself to everybody in As Ghana. You know. I'm Charles Dojigidisu, a civil society leader. Uh, the Eastern Corridor Road has a history. At least uh, I was a witness to. I was a witness to 2008 electionary campaign where President Mills promised fixing the Eastern Corridor Road. 2010, Togbe uh, Apede was a regional House of Chiefs, uh, their chairperson. Uh, he called on uh, the president that the road was not constructed with the chiefs in the region. 2011, con contractors were brought on road. Uh, we know. Construction started from Asikuma towards Have. By then, I, I was a student, so I was always using the road. Uh, after 2012 election, 2013, contractors were moved away from the road. So 2013, there was no construction ongoing on Eastern Corridor Road. 2014, there was no construction ongoing on Eastern Corridor Road. 2015, getting to the end of 2015, when election was approaching, and there was agitation from residents in the region, particularly traditional leaders and young uh, youth groups like us. They brought contractors and scattered them across the district along the Eastern Corridor Road. And immediately after election, that was obviously for purposes of election. Otherwise, for, on what basis was construction, which was started during President Moses' time, sword was cut by him. On what basis was it stopped after 2012 election? I I am seeking for that information from the government uh, that took over in 2013. Okay. Now, when we look at Boku, Boku, the name of Boku looks bigger than the town itself. When you look at the inner city roads, very bad. You can't take at least three steps without a pothole. You have been in government. What are the three key things you have done to the people of Boku that you expect us to still vote for you to go back to parliament? <laughs> 
Ya pase a ban mbuae. The mainstay of the people is Gary Processon. For the women especially, the rough state of the road makes it difficult transporting the Gary to the market for sale. My name is Maji Linda. I come from Nyakuma. The dust on this road is worrying us. Everywhere, including our homes, belongings and clothes, are covered in dust. We find it difficult getting transport here to the market because of the road. Some drivers take advantage to charge high fares. If government fails to work on this road, we will not vote this year. Nana Satakufi II is the chief of Nyakuma. He says if the road is not constructed before the December 7 election, no ballot boxes should be brought into Nyakuma. The lack of development in the Oti region can be blamed on this bad road. Trucks transporting yams to the market break down and empty their contents in the middle of the road, impeding traffic at all times. So what are the authorities doing about the roads ahead of the elections? There were some responses from the Boko Central Member of Parliament during last Friday's ballot box in his constituency. Who had a major problem, which is how to even get from here to Bolgatanga. It was a major problem for so many years. And so during my tenure as Member of Parliament and as a Minister of State, my focus in lobbying was to get the Boku Bolgatanga road constructed and in 2016 we finally succeeded and president john Ramani mahama god Ganvao, set up to do the bolga boku and added to the road and the project is ongoing as you can see during that period i had to make a choice you cannot be asking for a major project like Boku Bolga Road to be done, and at the same time be asking for money for the township roads to be done. So I have to make a choice. And the president supported my choice and proceeded to award the contract for Bolga, Boku, and Punyoko. Made a political. We are making efforts to speak to the Ministry of Roads and Highways to respond to some of the issues that have been raised. Um, but they have not spoken to us. They have not responded yet when they do. We'll bring you that response. In the meantime, producers of sachet or pure water, as it is called at Wale Wale, in the northeast region are bearing the brunt of a severe water shortage that has hit the municipal capital and its surroundings for weeks now. Producers are appealing for immediate government intervention as they are now forced to rely on water from uncovered wells and inadequate boreholes for production. The situation, according to them, has increased the cost of production, resulting in low incomes. A delay in the completion of a water supply project, which began three years ago, is blamed for the problem. Correspondent Elias Utanko has more. As of now, my, uh, I have three packaging machines. It's only one that is working because the water is not there. So the others are sitting down. We can't do anything. You, you have seen the tricycles, they are packed dead. They cannot go out. So that's, that's what it's about. Okay. It's a chain. We are the producers, we produce. And uh, the women also drag their livelihood from the sale of their water. And so if there's no packaged water, they are definitely also going to sit down without it. Maybe other people will come in and cash on the situation. That one I cannot see. But that is, and the deputy is going to throw us out of business. But a call we have made to them, and, uh, and I see that they are trying to respond to it, but it's not enough. It affects us greatly. 
because it is the raw water that we process to make our pure water. So when the supply is bad, it affects us greatly. And our customers, many, many, many young women and even old ladies have bought fridges and that is what they use to, pro, uh, to, to store the, what, the pure water they buy from us and do their business. You see? So when they don't get the pure water to sell, they can also be able to afford their daily bread. And it's difficult. It has reduced the level of production grid. Because what happened was we had a whole system which was supplying us the water. And when they were switching to the new system, they closed down the old system completely. And meanwhile, we have not been connected to the new system. So for about two months now, we have not been connected. So it has, it, uh, it has affected us greatly. It's bound to collapse. The business will collapse, definitely. Because we can't meet the demand, and that is a time People will need more water because the rains have subsided and there's no other source of water for drinking uh, apart from the sachet water. For this company, let me say we have about 15 workers who are directly or indirectly employed here. But outside there, the customers who depend on our products to sell they are uncountable. Hundreds, let me see, thousands of uh, customers depend on our product to sell, to be able to make their uh, ends meet. So it will affect all of us uh, in, in, the, in that chain, to affect all of us. So we are pleading seriously to the authorities concerned, especially the water company, to come to our team so that we connect us quickly to the new land to enable us to choose water. You can see we have nothing in stock. There's no water. Now, Finance Minister Ken Oforiata is expected in Parliament soon to present the first quarter of 2021 budget for approval. Ahead of that, there are mixed expectations. NDC MP on Parliament's Finance Committee, John Jinapo, does not expect any major policy announcement. Well, um, today is uh, a day that we all expect to hear the minister um, give indications as to how government will be run for the first quarter of 2021. Uh, it's, it's a requirement under the constitution that we have some votes provided before appropriation. So um, what I expect him to do is that he should be able to give us enough money for the next government. It may be NDC, it may be MPP, but usually when the funds are um, reasonably big, it helps the new government run the economy. The military has to be supported, the health sector has to be supported, salaries have to be paid, the ministries have to work. So, and then the new government that comes in needs time to settle, to appoint ministers and all that, before a budget giving will be prepared. So, uh, I don't expect any big thing, but what I propose, or I think should happen is that the COVID-19 era has taken a lot of toll on Ghanaians. And so the government or the minister may probably increase the, num the amount of money that may be required for running the country over the first quarter. But as to the details, we may have to wait. But the essential things are like the army, we have to keep the peace, the police have to keep the peace, the ministries have to work to ensure government, government does not ground to a halt, the health sector has to work, the schools, um, if really January is the time to open most of the schools, then uh, the educational sector will need funding. And of course, Parliament will also sit from 7 January, and we need to be money to run uh, the business of the country. So, presumably, a bigger figure than we all anticipated because of the uh, COVID, and so that's going to be uh, uh, post COVID, we can see. Even though COVID is not gone, not gone, we still think that the monies that will be voted should be slightly significant. We've heard figures that, you know, around 27 billion as what most likely the minister will be requesting for for the first quarter. 
fair figure, high side, low side, you think? Well, I think it's fair. I would have even thought that maybe a 30 billion, because you see, whatever figure you give um, will form part of the global budget for 2021. And so if it's 27, it's fair. If it's 30, it's fine. But whatever the projection is, the government's own plan for 2021 would obviously take out whatever amount is appropriated. Um, so 27, I think I've also heard something, a number around that. So we're in an election year, and so the finance minister would usually not present the full year budget for 2021. However, beyond December, in January, we ought to incur some expenditure. And under our constitution, standing orders and Public Financial Management Act, you need authorization from parliament in order to spend. So what we are doing is more or less like a holding budget, something that would sustain us for the first three months. That's the first quarter of January, February and March. And whoever emerges victorious or constitutes the next government, the finance minister will be expected to come with a full year budget in March. Uh, what I expect is that the finance minister at least would give us some updates uh, of happenings within the fiscal year, at least the first three months. That's the uh, three quarters rather. You should give us some information because clearly there are challenges with the economy. If you look at the macro indicators, the debt to GDP, our fiscal space, if you look at our import cover, if you look at most of the indicators, we are challenged. And so it's important that he gives us some updates on that. That would also inform us as to how to approve the budget for the next three months. That three months is a holding period. Basically, so you don't expect any drastic policy? No, 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 no. He is not supposed to bring us uh, major policy uh, interventions or policy decisions backed by budgets. Because we're going to be doing interest payment. We're going to service our debt. We're going to pay salaries. Uh, we're going to deal with emoluments. We're going to deal with statutory payments. And so Parliament ought to grant that approval for the next three months. But in terms of real policy, uh, like capital budgeting issues and all that, we don't expect that to happen. We expect that the next government will then come out with a budget to do that. We, we, we gather that he may be requesting for approval of money to the tune of around 27 billion Ghana cities for the first quarter. Uh, fair? W would that be a fair projection of... Uh, We're looking at the 2020 budget figures. That will sound like something on the high side. I'm tempted to think that then our interest payments are really ballooning. But this year alone, when it comes to debt servicing, we are spending about 38 billion with a tax revenue of just 42 billion. It means that when we collect all our tax revenues, over 90 billion goes into debt. Let's talk to Joseph Opoku Gakpo now, who joins us live. Joe, when is the minister expected to uh, come to parliament? That's still the million dollar question. We are still waiting. Sitting was supposed to begin around 10 o'clock. Sitting eventually began around 11.53. Uh, but the finance minister himself, Kenneth Foyata, is not in the chamber as we speak. The House has begun dealing with other businesses, including dealing with the, uh, a bill having to do with the ambulance service and all. And they've been correcting their votes and proceedings from yesterday. But uh, it's unclear when the minister himself will be in the House for the presentation of the first quarter budget. Do we know what's delayed certain? Not exactly. The indication that those on leadership we ask uh, are giving is that uh, they have a lot of other businesses. In fact, when you look on the other paper which outlines the specific uh, activities that the House is supposed to take care of this morning, it goes beyond the presentation of the uh, budget itself. So the leadership give the impression that they are just dealing with the other businesses. When the time reaches, they will get onto the budget issues. But for now, no one is sure why the finance minister hasn't showed up. But no. leadership makes the point that there isn't a case of a delay and that they are just dealing with other businesses before they get to the budget. And that's when they get there, the finance minister will be available to take care of that. Now, yesterday, Joseph, you told us that there were only about 11 members of parliament when the House uh, began sitting, and that number rose to only about 30. What are the numbers like this morning in the chamber? I think today the numbers are looking far more than the House has ever sat, uh, ever since they returned from their third meeting, uh, the break that they had for their third meeting uh, just about three weeks ago. The House is having the highest number of 
MPs showing up, um, paying attention. It's uh, inching towards a uh, hundred in terms of those who are present on the floor as we speak in order to get business done. Uh, we gather that on both sides, there's been the conscious efforts to encourage uh, MPs to show up because it's the day that the said budget statement is being presented for the first quarter of next year. The expectation is that when sitting is done, the said document will be referred to Parliament Finance Committee and they will be holding a sitting later today in order right. to deliberate on this and before the close of the they will come back to the House with a report in order to allow for approval of this request that's come to the House. Joseph. Um, on, on the specific... Mm. Go ahead. On, on the specifics, um, we, we've seen on the other paper that the amount that the House will be approving is uh, 27.4 billion Ghana cities. We gather that a, a lot of it will be going into a health area because of efforts to build a resilient... Uh, healthcare system post COVID 19. That's one of the things that uh, a lot of the budget will be dedicated to. Portions of it are going into regular payment, including debt servicing, payment for health services, and all. But one of the other things that we are told uh, is likely the finance minister will be giving more details on is um, another economic recovery plan post COVID that the minister will be laying details of once. Uh, he presents the budget statement, and portions of that will be contained in the 27.4 billion Ghana city that you'll be requesting that the House approves. Joseph Opoku Gakpo, thank you very much for joining us. Our First Lady Rebecca Kofuado has urged the electorate in trouble in the Gan West district of the Greater Accra region to vote massively for President Kofuado for one more term to complete the good works he has started with his Ghana Beyond Aid agenda. Mrs. Kofuado, who has been touring the constituency, assured the people of the construction of a major storm drain to help stop flooding, as well as the resumption of works on the construction of the Sawmill Road by Resource Access Construction Limited. She also visited the Ofanko market and Pokwasi markets. Pokwasi markets be ten years old. Namuya na, Nichiamu na, neighbor president, Osio Chiamu. Onusu obeba besra mu echebiya. Pokwasi market women. The president extends his greetings. He says he will visit you soon. We have only a few days to the elections and you have heard a lot concerning what this government led by my husband, President Ikufuado, has done for you in a bid to make life better. He's achieving all the things that he promised prior to becoming president. He's done the three senior high school and is also working towards implementing a no guarantor for student loans policy. There's more in the pipeline. And now once again, 7 December, yeah, for two, for four more years. And to arrive alive, it is better to be late than to be called the late. This is coming from Northern Regional Police Commander who is expressing worry over the weekly death rate in the region through road traffic accidents. COP Timothy Yosa Bonga is worried that the lives of energetic souls with the capacity to help increase productivity are just being snuffed out through these, unavo these avoidable accidents. There's no week that passes without us recording a motorbike accident in the metropolis, which is not good for us. These are young men and women whose contribution to this nation is yet to be failed. So if you lose your life now, we have lost your contribution to the uh, development of this nation. And we need to keep them alive. We have done a lot of uh, education. 
sensitization to these people, but we need to continue. As we are approaching uh, Christmas, my word to, my advice to road users is that let us exercise caution. Let us exercise caution. Don't be in hurry to get to any place. It's better you are late to that place than they will call you late. Exercise patience and obey your traffic regulations. Don't cross the red light when it is red. Don't move when it is red. Stop when it is green, you go. Don't try to overtake the wrong side. And our motorists, when you are on the motorway, make sure you have your helmet. Your premium rider should have his or her helmet. Because in motor accidents, studies have shown that when it happens, the likelihood of you hitting your head against an object or something is very high. The helmet, the crash helmet, will help with preserve your life, protect you and preserve your life. So we want to advise them, let us be patient and let us be obedient. Our men are on the road trying to manage the traffic. Listen to them. It is because of you they are there. If you are not there, we will not put them there. Because of the road users, that is why we deploy traffic officers for them to guide you so that we don't record accidents. Don't disobey them. Don't see them as people who are only troubling you. They are there in your own interest. On news today with me, Daniel Dazid. Daryl Kau is next with the latest in business and he'll be sending us back to Parliament because there's more insight into what to expect when the finance minister um, seeks Parliament's approval for governments to spend in the first three months of 2021. Hi, good afternoon. Welcome to Business. My name is Daryl Kwao. As we have been reporting, this our finance minister, Minister Ken Ofuata is expected to seek Parliament's approval for government to spend about 27 billion cities for the first quarter of next year. Now, George Jaffe has some more insights into where the money will be going. My business is also learning that the revenue estimates that will be presented to Parliament for approval will, however, be slightly lower than the about 27 billion Ghana cities that the Finance Minister is likely to seek approval. The presentation is not a budget statement, but rather a move to ensure that whoever is managing the economy come January 2021 will have the legal backing to spend up to the amount being proposed. This is to ensure that whoever is managing the economy as a finance minister come next year will be able to pay salaries of workers in the public sector during that period and also take care of other pressing needs and ensure that government machinery doesn't grind to a halt. This is because the Constitution and the Appropriation Bill requires that any money drawn from the Consolidated Fund must be approved by Parliament. However, the government of the day, or whoever wins December 7 election, will have an opportunity to present the major budget in March 2021 to Parliament. However, sources say the finance minister may use today's presentation to make a strong case for improved revenue mobilization to deal with the rising government expenditure as a result of some social interventions undertaken for this year. The proposal has been influenced by the country's low revenue levels in comparison to the size of the economy. Some economists have told job business that whichever government that will take over from next year, that is 2021, might be faced with taking some tough decisions to deal with the low revenue levels and financing the high budget deficit. So there are some tough times ahead. And we are awaiting that presentation by the finance minister. We'll certainly bring you that live here on this channel as and when it happens. In other news, uh, this afternoon, businesses have been admonished to review written contracts prior to the outbreak of COVID-19. 
This will enable businesses to identify their fundamental obligations under the contracts and just oppose that with the current reality. Now, contract specialist Tunisi Amuzu, who is also a lawyer with Gimpa, believes due to the negative impact of the virus, agreement partners need to meet each other halfway. It is close to us at a meeting of the Ghana National Chamber of Commerce and Industry in Tema. There's more in this report by Kwame Yanka. Prior to COVID-19 becoming a pandemic, businesses across the world had their own forecasts for 2020. However, after several months into the health crisis, some businesses home and abroad are tanking, bearing the brunt of the outbreak. Is there any window of opportunity to salvage contracts signed prior to this? Lawyer Tunis Amuzu is asking businesses to run to Contract Act of Ghana to help salvage impact of COVID-19 and agreement. So you start by identifying your fundamental obligations under your contract and compare it to what is happening then you can conclude that your contract is frustrated or not frustrated. Fortunately, the Contract Act of Ghana has provisions on what parties can benefit from uh, or how the consequences of frustration should be treated. And it is a good idea that companies familiarize themselves with these provisions and take advantage of these uh, provisions. It will be good that after reviewing these positions, businesses are able to get back to the negotiation table with their partners and uh, discuss. Martin Lawyer and Director of Temaport, Sandro Poku, wants individuals and companies to understand fine details before signing contracts. And we assume a lot. We don't read the fine details and then we just sign. And so I think that there needs to be a lot of education. If you're going into business, you should, you know, get a lawyer, you should get people who understand uh, the business, and then they can advise you properly on how to do your documentation before you start paying money to anybody or you start importing. And most of the time, the importers don't know much about the details and how to fill in their documentation. So they rely on the uh, shipping agents or the uh, clearing agents. I think for the clearing agents, majority of them understand the documentation that needs to go into it. And so even before you decide to import, you can go to GIF headquarters and let somebody there you know, be nominated for you to take you through the documentation before you sign anything with a seller, whether in the Far East or Europe, before you sign and bring in your goods. And we've got a full bulletin of business news at the top of the hour. Up next is Paul. Stay tuned. And welcome to the sports segment live here on Joy News today with me, Oreko Wampofo. We started from the biggest story that has been trending from yesterday, and that has to do with Barcelona president Josep Maria Bartomeu, who has resigned under increase in pressure, but said he had accepted proposals for the club to join a European Super League. Here's a report by the Joy Sports team on why Bartomeu resigned before next year's presidential elections. Fans had been trying to remove Bartomeu, who became president in 2014 and had fallen out with Lionel Messi. Bartomeu was due to step down in March, having served the maximum two terms as president, but was facing a vote of no confidence. More than 20,000 club members signed a motion to remove him. Resentment had grown against his leadership over the past year because of Western finances and Barca's decline on the pitch and their failure to win a trophy last season. Bartomeu also fell out with star player Messi in the summer after the Argentine forward handed in a transfer request. Messi failed to force a move and decided to stay but said he felt deceived by Bartomeu, adding there has been no project or anything for a long time. Barcelona are owned by their supporters who vote to elect a president to run the club. Well, at 4 30, we would be getting more insight on the Barcelona issue as we'll be talking to 
uh, an avid analyst of FC Barcelona who has been following the club for 15 years. He's based in the UK, so you do want to tune in at Sports Today, which happens 4.30 p.m. live here on the Joy News channel. But let's now move to some Ghana Premier League news, where ahead of the new season, Great Olympics head coach Anna Walker says his team are poised for action. Now, according to him, the playing body has responded positively since resuming training. And we do have more for you in the following reports by Joy Sports' Haruna Mubarak. About 17 days to the start of the Ghana Premier League, Great Olympics are training intensely as they seek to start the campaign. On a good note, head coach of the club, Anna Walker, declares his squad ready for the upcoming season. Of course, yes. That's why we started training because we are getting ourselves ready for the Premier League and we are ready. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about your new signings. I understand that about 10 players or even more have joined the club. What makes, what are they bringing on board? Okay, uh, in fact, you know, last year we we're having some young players and some old players, but uh, unfortunately we've uh, left the uh, the old players and we've had some uh, young ones. It has been close to 20 days since Great Olympics resumed training following government's decision to lift ban on contact sports. Coach Anna Walker is very happy with the way training sessions have gone. Uh, honestly, uh, like you asked, we trained for the past, this is the third week. Uh, we started from here in the whole of last week. We were at the beach doing the physical and the uh, <coughs> the hard work at the beach. Uh, God willingly, this week we started uh, on the pitch. That is tactical work and uh, uh, my formation that I'm going to play in the. I'm teaching what I'm going to uh, play when the league starts. And my boys are responding uh, uh, very fast and I'm really happy with what I'm seeing. Great Olympics travel to Takwa to face Mediama Sporting Club on March Day 1 of the Ghana Premier League. Well, remember that the Ghana Premier League kicks off November 13th and the Joy Sports team would be easing you into it. We kick off this Friday uh, when the Primer, GPL Primer, comes here. We'll also be focusing on Heart of Folk. And on Saturday, we'll be concluding what has been an immense transfer window in the Ghana Premier League. So you do want to keep an eye out uh, for the Joy Sports team.